What does it mean to say the ratio of boys to girls is 1 to 3? Let's imagine I'm having a party and I want to keep the ratio of boys to girls as 1 to 3. Quite simply what that means is for every one boy I invite to the party I must invite 3 girls. So if I invite one boy I just have to have 3 girls. But if I go and invite two boys, then I must have two groups of three girls. In other words, I must have six girls to keep the ratio the same. If I want to have four boys, for example, then for each time I add a boy, I must add three girls. In other words, if I have one, two, three, four boys, I must have one, two, three, four groups of three, twelve goals. And so if I wanted to get it all the way, for example, up to eight boys, well, every time I add a boy, I must add three girls, right? And so if I have eight boys, then I must have eight groups of three girls. In other words, I must have 24 girls. We can do this just using the numbers, right? Let's show it how it would be using the numbers. I want my ratio to be 1 is to 3. So, if I wanted to have 4 boys, well, what I've done is I have got 4 lots of boys, so I must have 4 lots of groups of girls. In other words, I must have 3 times 4, which is 12 girls, right? I need 4 groups of three goals. If I had, still keeping the ratio of one to three, if I wanted to have, let's say, eight boys, well, what have I done? I have put in eight lots of boys, so I need to have eight groups of girls. Eight groups of three gives me 24. And that's how we can operate with ratios. We call these things here, this one and this one, equivalent ratios. Because if we have one boy for every three girls, it's the same as having four boys for every 12 girls. Okay, the ratio of red sweets to blue sweets is three to four. What does that mean? It means every time you have three red sweets, you must have four blue sweets. So if you have six red sweets, that's two lots of them, then you need two lots of the four, which is eight. So now we can ask ourselves a question like, imagine we had 15 red sweets, how many blue sweets would there be? Let's just write this. What we have here is that we know that red sweets to blue sweets, the ratio has to be for every three red sweets, there are four blue sweets. And we want to know now, if we had 15 red sweets, how many blue sweets would we have? Well, let's just do this by picture. If we have 15 red sweets, well, that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 red sweets. In other words, we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 3. What will we need with our blue sweets? Well, we'll need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 4. In other words, we will need 20. We get a pencil, 20. And quite simply, what we can see is, what did we multiply? How many groups of 3 did we have? We multiplied by 5, so we need the same number of groups of blue sweets. Alright, let's get you to try one. Let's ask the question again. We've got 3 to 4 as our ratio of red sweets to blue sweets. And let's say we have 32 blue sweets. The question I want you to answer is how many red sweets? Pause the video now, try this in your homework book, and then we'll look at it together. Okay, so our ratio was red sweets to blue sweets needs to be 3 is to 4. And we had 32 blue sweets.
So the question always is, what did we multiply by to get from 4 to 32? Now, you should know your times tables well enough to say 4 times 8 gives me 32. Could also work it out by saying what's 32? Divide by 4. So, and you get the answer of 8, right? So you know that what you multiplied by here was 8. So you need the same number of groups of 3 here. So you multiply by 8. And so your answer is 24. You need 24 red sweets. Okay, another place where we come across ratios often is when we're kind of mi making a mixture. So like, for example, if we're making some Oros cool drink, some Oros mixture, uh, typically what you do is you have to mix the Oros syrup with water in a ratio of one to three. So the Oros syrup, that's that sort of thick stuff, you know, and you pour a little bit of that into your glass, right? And then you fill up the rest with some water and you mix it all up and you've got your Oros mixture. So Oros syrup is that kind of thick stuff you pour in, just a little bit of it, and then you put in the water. Okay, so the typical mixture of, of those sort of things is um, one to three. So that means for every one bit of Oros you put in, you need to put three bits of water. So if you put in um, 100 milliliters of Oros, you need to put in 300 milliliters of water to make your mixture. If you put, if you're making a whole lot of Oros for a whole lot of people, and you've got 20 lots of the Oros, 20 liters of the Oros syrup, you're going to need to put in um, 20 times 3, that's 60 liters of water to make up the Oros mixture. So let's ask a question like, for example, if I wanted to, um, if I had 500 milliliters of the Oros syrup, how much water do I, um, oh, I don't need a question mark there. The question is, how much water do I need? And then how much Oros mix, mixed Oros, will I have made? Okay, well, simple, it's a ratio. So we have 1 is to 3. I want 500 milliliters, I have 500 milliliters of Oros syrup. So to work out the water, well, what have I done here? I have multiplied this by 500. So I must multiply this by 500, and I will get 3 times 5 is 1500 milliliters. So the answer of how much water I'll need is I will need 1500 milliliters of water. How much will I have made in total? How much of the Oros mixture, the Oros cool drink, will I have made? Well, I've combined 500 milliliters of the syrup with 1,500 milliliters of water. And so together, I will have 5, millilit 500 milliliters plus 1,500 milliliters, which will equal 2,000 milliliters of the Oros mix. And 2,000 milliliters, you should know quite immediately that that is, could just be written more simply as 2 liters.